Hi everyone and welcome to today's session on the global distribution of earthquakes and volcanoes. Essentially what that means is where do we find volcanoes and earthquakes? Now this is going to be an amazing lesson so please can you make sure that you turn your phone off, that you shut the door, that you're somewhere quiet and you are ready to have a really good session. I'll see you in just a minute. Oh all you're going to need today, piece of paper and a pen, that's the lot. Okay, so let's make a start. So as I said, what we're going to be looking at in today's session is the global distribution of earthquakes and volcanoes. Essentially, what that means is where are they found? Where do volcanoes and earthquakes tend to occur? So please can I ask you to write the title, underline it so that your work looks super neat, make sure that you spell distribution correctly because I have seen that spelled badly before, and then let's make a start. Okay, so what we're actually going to have a look at first is this idea of tectonic plate boundaries. Now we looked at tectonic plates last session and we looked at the fact there are continental and oceanic plates. But this time we're gonna to start to think about what is going on where two plates meet one another. Now where two tectonic plates meet is called the tectonic plate boundary or you might hear it referred to as a plate tectonic margin. Now, they're the same thing. So a boundary and a margin, you can use those two words interchangeably because they mean the same thing. Now, essentially, we know that tectonic hazards are caused by the movement of tectonic plates. But our tectonic plate boundaries or margins, they play a hugely important role in this. So have a look at the map that's on the board. That shows you the names of all the big plates. So we've got the Eurasian plate, the African plate, etc. But where those big black lines are, they mark out where plate boundaries are found. So where two plates are meeting one another. Now, there is a lot of action that happens on those plate margins. So let's have a look at where they're found and then why. OK, so first of all, why is it that we find plate, uh, sorry, volcanic activity near plate margins? Now, the first thing that I'd like you to do is to have a look at the map that is on the screen. And I'd like you to have a look at the key because where you see the little red dots is where volcanoes occur. And where you see the black or the sort of gray line, that is where we have plate boundaries. So I just want you to start to think, looking at that diagram, is there a relationship? Do we get volcanoes on, take, blah, 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 I'll say that word again. Do we get volcanoes on tectonic plate margins or do they tend to not occur on those margins? Okay, so it is fairly clear from the map that we're looking at that the majority, but not all, of volcanoes occur on plate margins. Now there are the odd anomaly. And later on in the session, I'm going to talk to you about why they are, why those anomalies exist. But there are over 500 active volcanoes in the world. Now, active means that they are um, either continuously throwing out ash and lava, or they continuously erupt over periods of time. Half of those volcanoes are found on the edge of the Pacific Ocean. So if you have a look in the center of your map, you will see that those volcanoes are clustered all the way around the edge of the tectonic plate, the Pacific one. Now, a volcanic eruption occurs when molten rock and ash erupts from inside the earth. And as I said, the majority, not all, but the majority occur on plate margins. Now, what I'd like you to do is to extract some information from the map that you are looking at. And I want you to decide whether the following statements are true or false. So volcanoes are randomly distributed. There is a long line of volcanoes in the Pacific Ocean. There are lots of volcanoes in Europe. There are a few volcanoes in the middle of the Pacific. So could you write each of those sentences out and then write T or F next to them or true or false to decide based on that map whether you think 
that is true or whether you think it's false. Okay, so let's go through our answers. So did you get volcanoes are randomly distributed? Well, no, that is false. Because actually what we can see is there is a relationship or a correlation between tectonic plate boundaries and where volcanoes occur. Second one, there is a long line of volcanoes in the Pacific Ocean. Now that is true. We can see that actually along those plate boundaries, there are a huge number of volcanoes. Then we've got, there are lots of volcanoes in Europe. No, that is false. There are a couple of volcanoes. We've got Mount Vesuvius, we've got Mount Etna, but actually we don't have a huge number of volcanoes in Europe. And then there are a few volcanoes in the middle of the Pacific. Now that is true. Now they are actually anomalies, but they're called hotspots. And a hotspot is a weakness in the Earth's crust where the magma is able to force its way up through that weakness and it comes out as a volcano but they are more rare than the ones that we would find on plate margins. So give yourself a tick for each one of those you got correct. If you need to cross it out and you need to write true or false next to it because you didn't get it quite right, that is absolutely fine. Okay, so let's now have a look at earthquakes. So let's start by looking at our map. Now you can see on this map that recorded earthquakes are where these red dots are, a bit like on our previous map. And then what we have is the orange markations which show earthquake belts. Now those orange lines directly correlate to where tectonic plate boundaries are found. Now every year, and I always can't believe this, there are over 20,000 earthquakes. Now the majority of those are so small that actually sometimes we don't even feel them and sometimes they just cause no damage at all. The ones that are the problem, the ones that are hazards, they are really powerful and really destructive. And luckily they are rarer, they don't happen as frequently. Now, what we're going to do is have, again, have a think about this relationship between where tectonic hazards occur and these plate margins. So, what I would like you to do is to pause your video to complete this task. So I want you to describe the global distribution of earthquakes across the world. And I want you to imagine that this is a three mark question and you should use the map to help you. None of this should be done from memory. So three pointers to help you are tectonic plate boundaries, then I want you to talk about specific locations and to mention then any anomalies. So let's take another good look at this map. We can see that actually there is a huge number of earthquakes that happen in Asia. So that might be one of the specific locations that you want to talk about. But like our map that shows volcano distribution, there are also some anomalies. So if you have a look on the map, there are two continents that have some earthquakes that don't appear to happen on plate boundaries, the same way that we have with our hotspots. Might be worth mentioning those two as well. So pause the video, come back when you're finished, and let's go through our answers. Okay, so did you get? Now, this first point is really simple and it's the rule. The majority of earthquakes occur in lines along tectonic plate boundaries. So give yourself a mark if you got that one right. Then I said that I wanted you to use a specific example or a place. Because we're looking at a map, that's what we need to do as geographers is extract that information and use it to help us answer the question. So there are a large number of earthquakes in Asia and along the west coast of North and South America. So you could have chosen anywhere that you could see that there was a cluster of earthquakes. And then, whenever you're describing something, it's always worth looking for the anomaly. So you can see here, there are a small number of earthquakes which occur in Africa and Australia, which are not on plate boundaries. If you'd said Africa and Australasia, totally fine. 
So give yourself a big tick where you got each of those marks and let's crack on. Okay, so the main task for today's session is essentially to study the map and to then extract some information from it. And the information I want you to extract is about active volcanoes. So all you have to do is decide which of the following statements you think is true. So all active volcanoes occur on plate margins. There are many active volcanoes around the edge of the Pacific Ocean. Active volcanoes are found on the eastern side of North America. So pause the video, look really, really closely at the map and decide which one of those statements you believe to be true. Okay, so did you get? So all I asked you to do was look at the map and to extract some information that would help you to decide whether the following statement was, or which of the following statements was true. So all active volcanoes occur on plate margins. That isn't true. There are some active volcanoes, as we said earlier, like hotspots that can be found in areas that are not on tectonic plate boundaries, such as those little ones that are in the middle of the Pacific plate. Then there are many active volcanoes around the edge of the Pacific Ocean. That is definitely true. So if we look at the border or the boundary of that Pacific plate, we can see that there are a huge number of volcanoes in that location. Okay, last but not least then, active volcanoes are found on the eastern side of North America. That is also not true. As you can see, there are a few on the western side. Right, you have done really, really well today. We are nearly at the end. Well done. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's session. You have done really, really well. Well done. So I think the really key thing to take away from today is that the majority of earthquakes and volcanoes occur on tectonic plate boundaries or tectonic plate margins. What I would like you to do though, just to round up today, is to go through your notes and to highlight three key things that you have learned today that are really important that you will need to carry with you into the future. <laughs>